Assalamu alaikum. My name is Musa Jabeen and the topic of my presentation is Team Maze. Along with my group members, I'll be discussing Team Maze. And my subtopics are First of all, we should know that Team Maze experimental model. What is Team Maze? Team Maze is a simple maze used in animal cognition experiments. It is shaped like the letter T, providing the subject typically or a rodent or a mice with a straightforward choice, like they choose to move towards left side or right side. Team mazes are used to study how the rodents function with memory and spatial learning through applying various stimuli. You'll be thinking, what is spatial learning? Spatial learning is a memory of responsible for recording of information about one's environment and a spatial orientation. These concepts of TMAs are used to assess rodent behavior, the different tasks such as left-right discrimination as I told you and force alteration are mainly used with rodent to test reference and working memory. Now, Delayed reinforcement neuroscience. What is delayed reinforcement neuroscience? Like what is delayed reinforcement? Immediate reinforcement that occurs immediately after desired or undesired behavior occur. This type of reinforcement has the strongest and the quickest effect in controlling behavior. The longer the delay, the less likely the learning. Okay, like in May's task, Conventional TMA stars are a type of discrete while concurrent schedule. They can be adapted to the study of intertemporal choice by delaying reinforcer delivery in one of the goal boxes by some specified time. Most studies employing TMA stars have used proportional choice of the delayed reinforcer as a simple measure of preference. A measure which can only yield an indifferent point if preference is tested using a range of delays. So it will be li less likely to learn. So this is generally considered to be a significant shortcoming of the method, although the locomotor aspect of maze task may confer some advantages over lever pressing studies of choice that involve different effort requirements. Now, what are the methods in behavioral pharmacology in related to rodents? Like there are two methods, discrete trial or a continuous trial procedures. In the discrete trial procedure, each trial is independent of one of the preceding it. At the beginning of each trial, the animal is giving a force run to one of the two arms. For the choice run of that trial, both arms are available, but reinforcement is only in the one arm, not previously entered during the force run of that trial. Because the arm open for the force run differs from trial to trial, the arm that is correct on the choice run also varies from trial to trial. And information from a previous trial cannot be used to identify the correct arm for the choice run of that trial. Okay, now what is continuous trial? Continuous trial is like uh, uh, is like previous previously entered to front. Okay, procedure begins like the discrete trial procedure with the rat being forced to one up. Like it is subsequently going. Okay, continuously going. The correct arm is the arm not entered on the previous arm. Uh, okay. Each of these procedures has its advantages, disadvantages, and appropriate uses. Okay, the discrete trial procedure gives the experimenter complete control over the presentation of the information to be remembered so that any given parameter can be manipulated independently of any other. However, each trial has two runs, only one of which provides information for the dependent variable, like we'll get to know that the rodent will move towards which two runs, okay? Like from the forced run or a choice run, okay? In the continuous trial procedure, 
has the complementary set of advantages and disadvantages. The behavior of the animal can influence the information to be remembered, producing unwanted variability. However, each run, except the first, provides information for the dependent variable. As might be expected, the experimenter's goal should influence the choice of these two procedures. With, when efficiency in collecting data is more important, important than manipulation of specific variables. So continuous trial procedure is best, but discrete trial procedure is more appropriate, like it gives the data in an appropriate manner. Okay. Now, taking the help with one of my articles, I'll be discussing the discrete pair trial variable delay T maze task to assess working memory in mice. So it is related to our human nature. Like I'll be discussing what is in written the abstract that working memory abnormalities involving the prefrontal cortex dramatically contribute to poor functional outcomes in patients with schizophrenia and is still represent an unmet therapeutic need. Studies in Jordan might provide essential tool to understand the mechanism underlying prefrontal cortex dependent working memory dysfunctions, as well as previous tools for genetic pharmacological testing. However, Prof proper test assessing working memory and sensitive to prefrontal cortex dependent function must be used. In this regard, the discrete pair trial variable delay T maze task equivalent to delayed non-match to sample task used in humans has provided to be an effective paradigm to test prefrontal cortex dependent working memory dysfunctions with high predictive validity of in human studies. So the background of that article is based upon the term working memory it refers to the type of the memory that is active and relevant only for a short period of time. On the scale of seconds, while performing complex tasks such as reasoning, comprehension and learning, the concepts of working memory evolved from that short-term memory and now it stands at the interference between perceptual processes and long-term memory formation. The remarkable correspondence between performances of human patients with frontal lobe lesions or frontal lobe cortex lesion monkeys and rodent schizophrenic patients made the PFCs dependent tasks among the most used in behavior. There are numerous working memory tasks that have been employed and validated in rodents in order to reliably measure the maintenance of visual spatial learning. These tasks involve an initial sample or a force, like I told you about the reinforcement, delayed reinforcement in which the rod is exposed to a visual target or an arm of the maze, okay? Subsequently, there is a two choices, like a choice phase and a forced run. Thus, the working memory construct is based on the fact that the tested rod is required to integrate information held online. With the learn rule, this paradigm has been mostly implemented in mice using T mazes. In this context, the discrete pair trial variable delay T maze task seem to be similar to human delay response task, like it is interrelated to human uh, prefrontal lobe cortex. Like uh, now, I will tell you about like wh why it is similar to human delay response task. It relies on. It relies on. MPFC function. Among the specific brain areas involved in the adult social brain function, functional activity in prefrontal cortex, particularly the medial prefrontal cortex is of special importance for human social 
cognition and behavior. So that's why it is similar with the rodents and human response. Indeed, it is based on the delayed and non-match to position paradigm, where the delayed alternation responses are driven by food reinforcement. Like in the experiment, we'll do food reinforcement. In particular, during a sample of forced run, the experimental subject is forced to explore an arm of the maze. Then after a variable delay in the choice run, Phase, the subject has to choose between the original sample and the opposite arm. Rodents are then presented with a sequence of randomly chosen force run, each followed by a choice run. Now, furthermore, uh, I'll furthermore I'll be explaining the experiment that how the rodent choose the choice run or a force run. It is uh, uh, it is acknowledged as well as the necessity of the hippocampus involvement for different tasks used to study spatial working memory, okay? Now, the experiment. What we'll need, materials and reagent. We'll need male mice, which is of eight to 16 weeks old. We can take female mice, but after the evaluation of Easter state, as well as other mouse strains without any locomotor impairment. And second is food reinforcer. Third is ethanol. Ethanol is used to clean the teamies uh, apparatus. Equipment is team is apparatus. Team is apparatus was built like you have, I have shown you in the picture. Like what are the dimensions and what are the lengths? Okay. Now, uh, the very important part of my presentation is procedure, that how the discrete paired trial variable delay T maze task works. Mice were exposed to a sequence of randomly chosen force run, each followed by a choice run, so that they were required to integrate information held online. The force run with the learned rule, like we first uh, on we'll do experiments to day to day and we'll do uh, we'll ha help them to learn the uh, learn the uh, data and then we'll uh, check the spatial learning memory okay beginning on the following day beginning on the following day the, uh, the there are some step by step protocols okay like following a randomly choosing force run, force run and a force delay interval in the home cage, the mouse is placed back in the maze with access to both arms. The food reinforcer is located in the opposite arm, entered in the previous force arm, okay? Like on day one, we'll weight the mouse and singly house each mouse, okay? And give them water, filter and food, everything. On day two, we'll do same singly housing habituation. On day three, we'll do same singly housing habituation uh, till day eight, okay? On day nine, we'll again weight the food and each mouse. And on day 10, weigh each mouse and food 24 hour intake, okay? On day 11, we'll do same take all of food, leave water, like we'll take out all of the food from the cage and give them only water, so, okay? Change cage filter and water. On day 12, animals are partially food deprived, like they, they will be needing food, but we'll not give them, okay? Remain their way throughout the experiment. So it will give us 60% of their 24 hour intake check net status okay now on day 11 it is same and day 12 it is same it will food deprive on day 13 it will be same on day 14 it will be same on day 15 it will be same on day 16 it will be same like i'll show you in this uh, picture like till one till day 
uh, day 16 it will be same okay uh, we'll give food and restriction on day 17 and 18 each mouse is allowed to explore the maze with all doors raised for 10 minutes food is placed in both both golem quantifying the time required to eat the first pallet they have to eat all the food presented okay on day 18 it is same each mouse is allowed to explore the maze with all doors raised for 10 minutes food is placed in both coal arms like they eat all the food on day 19 we'll do force alteration runs animals are exposed to one day one to ten force alteration runs specifically they are placed in the team is with one goal arm closed up we'll like a uh, closed our one arm and open only one arm and had to two minutes to run eat the reward in the open arm after consuming the reward they are removed from the maze one trial for each mouse okay run the experiment with about 10 cages in the room mice are tested back to back one pal at the end of the arms then on day 20 to day 30 there is our experiment starts discrete pair trial delayed alteration training we'll train the uh, mice okay each discrete trial consists of four run choice pair like there is one is choice run choice run that they, they have the choice that move towards which side and there's a force run that will close one gate and open one arm. Okay, a different randomly chosen pattern of force run. For example, for example, there is a right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left is used every day. But on a given day, the same pattern is used for all animals. The pressure must be cleaned with water and ethanol. As I have told you, the use of ethanol to clean. Okay. Then on, then on uh, 40 or earlier, there is final phase. Final phase, it is like once an animal performs consistently at the force inter-run delay training at three additional delays like 30, 60 and 24 seconds and win with an inter trial delay of only 20 seconds begin. Mice are tested at all four inter run delays for four consecutive days with 16 pair trial per day. Four pair trial at each delay every day. Like we choose four and four that like we'll do four trials each day okay now now after this we'll do the data analysis all data generally assume a normal distribution and then they are subjected to parametric test ANOVA test okay A graph in figure display latency E, like the experiment, the procedure which we have performed. Now they have shown us in the graphs, like number A is the days to criterion and correct choices and knockout mice in determines performed during the task. Both groups learn similarly to run quickly into the maze to retrieve the reward as indicated by the significant decrease of the latency to eat during the second day. Day 18 of exposure to the reward compared to the first day. Moreover, both groups required the same number of days to reach the criterion of 80% of the correct choices for three consecutive days. Like you have, you have seen 80% they have achieved. However, although both groups exhibit delayed dependent behavior progressive increase of error with longer delays like they delayed the learning 
might show the significant working memory deficits than wild type mice at both 40 and 30 intraorent delays. Note that is very much important like while doing this experiment, the mice becomes very stressful. Animals were food restricted throughout the experiment to maintain 90% of their Elevitum body weight, the maintain of the 90% of the mouse, initial weight is crucial. Mice that do not maintain this body weight condition tend to slow down or do not move into the maze. The ideal number of mice that our researchers should test in this behavioral task is 10 to 12. Testing more animals in the same experiment would be challenging and could uh, like it increase the time. The overall experiment should take about 40 to 60 minutes per mouse. During the experiment, researchers should avoid to put the mouse on the grid of the cage. It is less stressful for the mouse picking up it from the home cage and placing it directly into the start position of the maze. Reference. Thank you so much. I hope you like my presentation.